Hello everyone, uh, this is a new lecture in which we are considering uh, the important notion of zeros and poles of the linear system. Namely, uh, we are looking at uh, zeros and poles of the linear system. In other words, of G of S associated with the linear system and obtained as uh, S I minus A inverse B. Okay. And what are the features of the linear system in the context of the zeros and poles? Namely, if we consider linear system and we consider input function into the linear system u of t we already found out how to calculate this output and we do the following we transfer our linear system from the state space representation which is just here x dot equal a of x plus b u y equal c x by using Laplace transform. We transfer this into this g of s representation and we take Laplace of the u of t And we combine the U of S with G of S to obtain that Y of S is response given as a multiplication of these two expressions, U of S and G of S. Once we have that, we just transform this expression into factors and we obtain corresponding response in the time domain. That's how we determine the response of the system. Having said this, there are two cases that we can consider when U of T signal is a signal that has a certain characteristic associated with the poles of the transfer function. So if u of t input is input into the transfer function we conclude that Laplace transform of u of t is going to produce 1 by s minus alpha g of s and we therefore found out that y of t is going to become same function as e alpha of t multiplied by the transfer function evaluated in alpha. Having this in mind, the question that is raised is what happens if alpha is zero of transfer function. So what happens in this case? Okay. And we can easily provide an answer to this question. If alpha is zero of the transfer function, we see that From this expression that e to the alpha t is a signal that is applied to the g of s output also has to be e to the alpha t all other transients will that out and g at alpha will be 
equal zero. In other words, in this case, if we applied alpha e to the alpha t to the system as a signal, so this is let's say e to the alpha t signal this time the output is nothing but a flat line in other words we obtain and we constructed something that is filtered Because any signal, any signal with alpha, which is zero of transfer function will be blocked okay in other words we can use this notion to construct the filter in order to block some desired signals so the filter therefore can be designed designed to block certain signals that's very important notion. okay in other words filter are emerging as a consequence of zeros of the transfer function let's see what about poles if alpha is pole of the transfer function namely again e to the alpha t applied to the gfs leads to the e to the alpha t G of alpha, but if alpha is pole, G of alpha should go to infinity because if I evaluate the transfer function at the pole, we will get. 1 by infinity or n of s by infinity g of s is n of s and p of s and therefore p of s n of s divided by 0 will be infinity does it really happen does it really happen that you have a, some generalized plant, large scale plant, and there is a signal e to the alpha t that if it's the pole of the plant, this plant will essentially explode and go to infinity let us 
check what really happens in this case. Okay, so we are claiming that E to the alpha t, we get the g of s, and we are obtaining that y of s is nothing but g of s 1s minus alpha. If alpha is a pole, we can write g of s as n of s, some p of s, s minus alpha, multiplies 1 s minus alpha, because this one pole is the pole in the plant. Therefore, if this is the case, we see that we can express these two polynomials in the factors A0, S minus alpha squared plus A1 s minus alpha plus plus and all other terms plus a and s minus s n at where all these others s1 to sn are the roots of this polynomial pfs so why we get s minus alpha squared? Because these two terms, s minus alpha and s minus alpha from the input, this is from the input, from u of s, from u of s, and pole, that is pole s minus alpha of the plant, are identical. Therefore, we will have a repeated root, and that is what we get. We immediately see that y over s given in this form, actually let's write y over t, is going to be just a0 t e to the alpha t exponential e to the alpha t plus a1 e to the alpha t plus all others which are associated with the uh, roots of the P of S, A n, which is e to the minus S n bar t. Again, we see that all these other terms, they go to zero, and our plant is following e to the alpha t, because if we factor this outside, we will just have a e to the alpha t a0 t plus a1. Okay. We observe also, very important thing, that if alpha is positive, the plant will also go and increase in its own output. You see that? E to the alpha t. If alpha t is negative, then this term here, e to the alpha t multiplies a zero t, will drive the system high to diverge. However, e to the alpha t will bring everything down, and system again will show stability because the output is not going to go to infinity. If t is sent to infinity e to the minus alpha t is going to overtake a0 of t and is going to bring the output down. You can check this by taking the limits of these two expressions when alpha is negative. Okay, so we check two important properties of the zero and poles. One provides us with the 
filter design and another one is just demonstrate that when we use the function e to the alpha t which is pole of the system we will just excite these normal or these hidden modes of the system dynamics in the next lecture we will do just filter design